Talking to Ohio State with uh, Steve Hellwag and Buck Nuts, uh, Kevin Noon from Buckeye Grove as well. Each and every week, hit the bell for the notifications. Once you subscribe, that way you know when we're going live, and we have to coordinate with uh, the three of us plus Tony Gerdeman. So it's not always the same time. So it's uh, vital that you subscribe for the other live streams and call-in shows as well. So a number of questions coming in. Uh, Cheryl asked about a 3-4 defense. Do we have any reason to believe that there are going to be changes to the defensive scheme this year, especially toward a 3-4? I don't know why they would be going to a 3-4. I think that when you sit there and you have somebody like Kerry Combs, who pretty much they, the Titans, when he was with Tennessee, ran everything uh, under Dean Pease, and he certainly has all of those at his uh, his discretion. I, you know, I don't know why you would run something that would be a traditional three, four. I mean, I think you could see a situation of where you could have Baron Browning do something more as a, as a rush in type. And, you know, but I, you know, I don't know, unless I missed something in one of the conference calls, I never heard anything that led me to believe that we were going to see some sort of structural change in front of the uh, front seven. Yeah. I think the only thing I think about is uh, if Haskell Garrett, and uh, Teron Vincent are both slow to get back on the field at defensive tackle, which it sounds like neither of them will be, be available for the time being. And you're very thin at defensive tackle, and you just don't want to play true freshman there and get mauled. Uh, what you could do in some passing situations is put Tyler Friday inside or one of the bigger defensive ends and let them fight through that uh, traffic in the middle and create a situation where you've actually got three speed rushers on the field and one of them coming up the middle as well. So uh, potentially that is, uh, and they've done that in the past. They called that the rush man package where they would put a defensive end, a defensive tackle and, and uh, you know, kind of roll the dice. And, you know, when it's third and long, I don't think it's much of a gamble, to be honest with you, to, to put an extra uh, pass rusher in there instead of a hold the point of attack defensive tackle. So, uh, I mean, they're not going to run the ball up the middle on third and long. So I, I look at it. You can run uh, twists and stunts and run different games with your defensive linemen if you have those agility type players, the defensive ends in there. So um, perhaps that's a wrinkle that we might see keeping it still a 4-3 package. Um, I just I can agree with Kevin. The only outside linebacker who I think, you know, could play in that type of thing would be Baron Browning, maybe as a pass rusher. But um, and I'm sure he will have blitzes coming off the edge all the time and maybe drop one of the linemen into coverage or whatever and do some different things like that. But, um, you know, I don't I don't think that you're looking for a major philosophical change. And really just say a prayer that maybe Teron Vincent or Haskell Garrett will play this season. Uh, maybe we'll know more as we get into the season to see, are they in uniform? You know, are they even down there on the sideline? I mean, it just, it, we are kind of kept at bay on a lot of this information. And, uh, you know, had we been able to go to practice four or five times, we would be able to, to know who's available and who isn't and uh, kind of make those value judgments. But as it stands, we're kind of at their mercy until they come out with their report next week of uh, depth chart and then maybe Friday injuries and those kind of things. So uh, they, they keep that information under wraps. David Greenshield uh, wants me to wear my Arch Leachster jersey for the Buckeyes opener. Before I went to bed last night, they were showing the 1981 Minnesota-Ohio State game up at the old uh, Metropolitan Stadium. Buckeyes lost that one. That hurt uh, quite a bit. That knocked them out of the Rose Bowl. They still tied for the Big Ten title. But, uh, yeah, Arch Leachster in that one, of course, his senior season. All right. Uh, David is also saying that I've dodged him in regards to his question about uh, he's, he's, he's called in a number of times. He's asked me who's going to win the big 10 Western division. I've said, I haven't made my predictions yet. So he's trying to get a pick out of either one of you. I don't know if you guys have made your official big 10 picks yet. I haven't yet. That's coming next week. And honestly, I haven't made it that far on, on, on the West. I've done a couple of different interviews and I think in each interview I've done, I've picked a different team coming out of the West. So, um, uh, yeah, I could throw a team out right now, or I could save it for next week when we do this show, uh, Ohio State Buckeyes Live number 76. And I think I'll do that just so I can live with a pick and and, and be consistent. 
Yeah, I am going to sit down. I've got the schedule here, and what I like to do is go through and put a W and an L on every one of those uh, things. Um, I can tell you that uh, Buckeye Sports Bulletin uh, did a survey of a lot of the beat writers, and in that I said undefeated and playing for the national championship for Ohio State. But, you know, maybe as I go through this, I'll get some other ideas. But that's kind of my inclination right now is – you know, I watched Ohio State just traipse through the Big Ten like it was nothing last year, and I need to see some of these other teams work up to Ohio State's level, to be very honest with you. The only one that deserved to be on the same field with them, uh, well, they were ahead big on Penn State and let Penn State come back in Wisconsin. They were behind big to Wisconsin the second time they played and then blew them out in the second half, so the only ones that deserved to be on the same field with Ohio state were Penn state and Wisconsin. And the rest of them were, you know, a bunch of junk it really when it comes right down to it. So I don't know. I, I guess I'd like to take a few more days to look at it, but I, I would lean heavily toward Ohio state winning the big 10. I mean, I just, I, I mean, objects in motion continue in motion. You know, it's just, it's just inertia at this point. One top five class replaces another top five class replaces another top five class and and nobody else in the Big Ten's recruiting at this level. So home, away, it doesn't matter. Ohio State goes in, takes care of business.